I also had some assault infantry on the way, and actually I told Lollybo to do whatever he could to take out the stormtroopers in the middle. And uh, he <laughs> he bought a Calliope, a Sherman Calliope, comes with a rocket launcher on the top, plus it's a tank. And that certainly cleared out many of the riflemen on the point, plus some of the stormtroopers, and so that uh, worked out pretty well. Um, Sherman Calliope, actually a pretty nice piece of artillery, because it can defend itself, unlike almost all artillery, because it's a tank. Uh, it doesn't have a machine gun on top of those. Oh, so I'm pointing out these stormtroopers and paratroopers. This is like the jackpot fucking mother load. Um, Foshy Magers plus stormtroopers, two squads of them, are, or one squad of each. I really want to kill them. Number one, because that's a lot of points. That's very expensive infantry. That's 35 points, 20 for the stormtroopers, 15 for the paratroopers. I also want to kill them because um, there's a lot of them, and you always want to kill a lot of enemy units. I also want to kill them because they're headed straight to the middle, and that's not good. Um, so I'm trying to get sight on them because um, Lollibo still has another volley left in his Calliope rocket launcher, and I'm like, dude, dude, kill it, kill it, kill it, kill it. And um, here we go. I lost my scout, but uh, that was amazing. That took out the stormtrooper and uh, the paratroopers and some riflemen for good measure, I think, plus his assault infantry and my assault infantry mopping up the remainders, although we're being shelled by Pack 35 so now that we've captured the middle, I'm trying to pull back, because assault infantry are a terrible thing to waste. They're just so powerful. Um, I don't want them dying. And uh, that bar man made a fighting retreat. Browning automatic rifle. Browning automatic rifle weighs like 21 pounds or something when you load it. That's uh, pretty heavy, and so you couldn't... It was it was pretty unwieldy. I think either in World War II, I think it was in World War II, they issued a... Um, sort of belt clip sort of thing, or shoulder clip sort of thing. It was like a pouch, a half pouch. You would rest the Browning's um, butt or stock. You would rest the stock in it. I'm signaling again for Lollybo to hit these guys. Um, those are assault infantry or paratroopers, I can't tell. Um, for him to hit them with artillery, but I don't think it's reloaded. Um, they issued a little sort of thing you would wear, and you would rest the Browning in the little cup, and um, you're supposed to use that so that you could fire while on the move. Um, apparently not a lot of people used it wasn't very popular. That's all right. In the original Day of Defeat, the Half-Life mod for, um, Half-Life. Yeah, the Half-Life mod for Half-Life. Um, the, the bar, eventually, they had, um, a bar with a bipod, I believe. That was fun. In the new Day of Defeat, there's no bipod. Day of Defeat Source. I like Day of Defeat Source, though. It's a completely different game than Day of Defeat, but they're both good games. If you like World War II, check out Day of Defeat Source, I guess. I think people still play it. It's worth playing. I think it's worth playing. It's a good game. So um, these assault infantry that I retreated a while ago have healed themselves up, and I decided they're just going to... Um, that, that shot right there that killed those people, that was a Calliope shot from the main gun. That's why it's awesome. It's a tank. And um, so I decided these assault infantry, they've been beaten back once already. They're just going to overlook the point, because assault infantry, United States assault infantry, are actually a little unique in being very good at um, defensive operations. Russian assault infantry are very good at assaulting, uh, they have fantastic submachine guns and a flamethrower, um, plus a machine gunner, so he can hold back. But the other Russian assault infantry are very good for rushing in and killing people. German assault infantry are good at everything. They have MP44s mostly, um, and basically they can kill whoever they want. Although they also have MP40s, so very good at getting in close. Um, who else? British assault infantry are kind of a joke. Um, they're basically just guys with Thompsons and body armor. I mean, they're powerful, but, you know. And that's a tiger, so this is not good. Um, but American assault infantry have a lot of Brownings, I think one or two Brownings, um, and a bunch of Garands, or, or M1 carbines, one or two. And, um, like, yeah, that guy's got a Garand, you see? <laughs> Ooh, now he's dead. Um, and you see my defense is crumbling. These guys are in full-on Saving Private Ryan mode. Um, but yeah, that gives the Americans a lot of long-range firepower, the Brownings and the Garands, and um, it makes them very well-suited to a defensive role, especially with those sandbags. The Rangers can do the same sort of thing. The American Rangers, the light elite infantry, uh, they similarly have uh, M1 carbines and bars, so that's good at a medium-range sort of combat thing, sort of like the Germans are good at medium-range. Um, but yeah, I'm always probing on the right. Also, I bought a mortar a while ago because the heaviest thing that we were facing was AT guns, so I figured I could shell them to hell and back. And, um, of course, for your mortar to be any use, uh, you have to find the enemies, and if they're not attacking, you have to attack them to scout the enemies, and that's exactly what I'm doing. Um, I'm losing quite a few people, but I was giving my mortar a thing to shoot at, and Lollibo's Calliope just fired in the middle. You can see um, I'm looking at the stuff. He was firing at the Tiger um, managed to take out six paratroopers, but um, I don't think he did anything to the tiger. 
I believe he fires another thing, kills a tank crewman, not sure what that was, maybe someone who got out to fix the tread on the tiger does damage, but uh, yeah, rocket's really not going to do much against a tank, especially one as heavily armored as a tiger, um, and especially something as small as the Calliope rockets, maybe like the giant Japanese rocket that looks like an ICBM might do something against the tank, but um, typically, even though you're hitting the weak top armor of a tank, um, rockets are more of an explosive weapon, just going to impact the top and go kaboom and make everyone inside kind of scared. But so now I'm like, holy crap! I'm this. If I can get behind this tiger, this is going to be the most amazing thing in the entire world. I'm sprinting the submachine gunner who I planted behind enemy lines in right at the last moment. Some magic guy pops out of the tiger and shoots me, probably because I was spotted by someone, some infantry somewhere, and so the tiger knew to shoot me. Um, they're not actually psychic. Uh, despite what you may think. So um, that was just me getting unlucky. I got spotted by an enemy. It was not likely to succeed, succeed in the first place, but I figured I would try it anyways because it totally would have been worth it. Um, the boat disappeared at some point. I think Lollibo got in the boat and started driving around. Um, this tiger, as you might have noticed, is a pain in our butt. They have 643 points. We have 357, and we're not making much progress in the middle. Um, I keep my assault up on the right, though, because I figure if we, that can ever, if we can ever take that, that'll give us a hell of a lot of breathing room. Um, but my submachine gun infantry are getting bogged down in the assaults and killed, so that's not good. Not ideal at all, is it? No, it isn't. But um, slowly and surely, my mortar is picking away at their defenses, forcing them to either target more people to the right or fall before my mighty onslaught of dead submachine gunners. And it looks like they've probably been targeting more people to the right if the uh, numbers of reinforcements are anything to go by.